All right. So, over the past few years, uh, I have received a few comments, like in the videos, talking about uh, phantom power. So, to start off with, uh, especially uh, maybe consoles probably made in the last 10 years, 10, 15 years, all of them pretty much have phantom power available on them. Uh, how the phantom power is distributed is not usually the same between consoles. So, for example, in this one here, uh, there's no switches to turn phantom power on or off. There's just one button. That turns on phantom power to all these XLR inputs. And then one button, it goes off. Okay, then we compare that with other consoles where we can turn on phantom power individually on whatever channel it's needed. Okay, some consoles would have banks that you can turn on and off. The uh, Yamaha MG series that we had uh, it was a 24 channel console. It had, uh, I believe it had two banks for uh, phantom power. So you could turn on, it was 12 inputs and then you could turn on the other 12 inputs. Okay, phantom power is uh, around 48 volts. It's not an exact thing. And uh, in our example here, I'm gonna use this. We can take a look at this. So right now, phantom power is off on this board. So here we just turned it on. Um, Hope you guys can see that red light showing that it's on. So let's take our meter here. We're going to set this to a volts. All right, let's see if we can adjust this meter here a little bit better so you can see what's going on. So there we go. This is uh, between pins one and uh, one and two. And we'll take a look here between pins one and three. And as you know, pin one is the ground. All right, we got 48 volts between pins one and three. Now, what if we were to take a reading between pins one, pardon me, between pins two and three? There we go, this is what we get, zero. And this is because, now there is power going on between pins two and three, but it's the same power. It's the same power, but there's nothing in reference showing that there's current on pins two and three. But there is power. But this is why, because it doesn't see any power, this is why you can hook a regular dynamic microphone up to it and not have any issues with it, and it's going to work fine. It's because there's no, it doesn't see the power, even though it is there. So we use phantom power uh, to power our AKG. These are the Perception 220s. And we use it to power the uh, Audix ADX 51s. These are our uh, like overheads for the drum kit cymbals. Uh, we can do uh, acoustic guitars with these as well. But the thing to know about phantom power is it's not going to be exactly 48 volts coming out. Now, what you need to find out with uh, your mics that require phantom power is what's the voltage range that it's expecting for it to work. Uh, the AKGs, I believe, are looking anywhere between 44 and 52 volts to work, whereas our AKG microphones are looking anywhere from 9 volts to 52 volts to work. All right, let's turn this off here. This is a, a a situation I've seen sometimes. I've seen this done on some boards. Let me get in here a little bit on that. The um, they'll stick a gender uh, gender changer to convert a type of input or output to something else different, which is fine. But the problem here is that when we go to phantom power here. All these outputs are now charged. I can touch these and not get shocked. But if I try to touch this up here, not the jacketing, the side of it, but the actual pins, these pins are charged with electricity. Anybody accidentally touching those pins right there could get shocked. A lot of consoles are going to have their own, uh, not their own, but the voltages are going to be somewhere around 48. So for this Presonus board, 
it's sitting at 52 volts. Fan and power, even though it says it's a 48V on here, it's actually running 52 volts. But when you start turning on more fan and power, you're going to notice that the voltages are going to start dropping. Now, it's not going to be drastic, but the more that you use, the less voltage that you're going to have available. Now, it's not much, but you need to realize that there is a slight voltage drop, which generally it's a good idea that when you're not using fan and power to keep it off. The uh, ribbon mics will be destroyed if you put phantom power on them. So if you're using a ribbon mic, like in your studio for something, don't think that you can take that ribbon mic out and use it in a live sound situation on a board that is like this, that does not offer uh, controlling where phantom power can be used. All right, so let's say that, so we've got a setup over here where Let's say this is our monitor console, and this is the front house console, and we need phantom power. And on our setup, we use a uh, splitter that sits at the stage. So basically, the uh, one mic that comes in, the signal goes to the monitor console, and it goes to the uh, front house console. So a question sometimes comes up about phantom power. Where should the phantom power be turned on at? So what we're doing here is we've got phantom power turned on on our monitor console and here at the front of house console. So let's check the voltage at this line here. All right, it's 50 volts. It's a little bit less than what this console puts out, but it's a little bit more than what this console puts out. So there's no issues with this whatsoever. Uh, this has never been an issue, and this is how larger shows, if we're running separate monitor in front of house. Let's just unplug this side here. Goes right back up to 52 where it is. So there's never really much of any issues uh, running fan and power between a monitor and a front of house console. But I, I will say this, that when we run our system, we run fan and power. We just choose to use the monitor console to provide the power to all the microphones. So there's no sense in running fan and power on both consoles, especially if you don't need to. All right, the type of meter that you get uh, can be important for it to actually give you the information that you're needing. And so I'm gonna show you something here really quick uh, that was an issue with uh, the meters that we have. Let's take a look here. Now we're here in the US and our voltage is 120 volts. So you should see 120 volts show up here because I am testing uh, the wall current here. Uh, yeah, just to make sure here. Okay, 123 volts. All right. Now, let's take a look at this one over here. All right, same thing. All right, let's take a look at the phantom power. You should see it here. I'm going to move this over to volts DC. And just like you've seen before, okay, we got 53 volts here. All right, so now I think some of you electronics people probably have already figured this one out. Let's take a look at the DC voltages using this meter here. Bear with me just for a moment. All right, this is the same cord same input, and we got 18 volts. This one was showing 52, this one's showing 18. So anyway, this took me uh, a little while sort of to figure out, but what I ended up having to do was uh, contact 
my colleagues, if you will, in the audio industry and says, what's going on? Because this one meter is only showing 18 volts. Well, right on the meter here, this is a low impedance meter. So it is not going to be able to pick up anything beyond the 18 volts DC. This meter works great. Uh, I've used it quite a bit out in the field, but I never really needed to test anything above, let's say, just the ohms out of the cabinets, uh, test a 9-volt battery maybe. So, all right, so low impedance meter is not what you want to use uh, when testing things like this, higher DC voltages. You're going to need a regular, uh, regular voltmeter. Now, this one does do uh, the low impedance. However, it's in a separate area by itself, and it does indicate that it's a low Z. I don't know if you can see there or not, but it does indicate that's a low Z on, on the screen. This one says the same thing. It's a low Z, but it also says it right down here. I tell you, when I put that up there, I completely forgot all about this. It just went over my head. So just make sure when you're looking at a meter that it's not 100% low impedance, unless that's what you need uh, for your setup. For us, a low impedance meter uh, just doesn't work for the kind of stuff that we're doing here. All right, so let's see if there's a difference between uh, the amount of voltage that it shows here locally on the, on the board versus going through, this is a 150 feet right here. And we're using channel 21 here. It's going through the 150 foot snake that we have and it's coming out pigtail on here. It's coming out this point right here. So let's take a look at this. All right, we're going to turn phantom power on. And I always like to uh, double check. So we're going to be looking at uh, pins. Do pin two and one here on this one. Okay, looks good, 48 volts. Okay, so 48 volts there, and let's check it on uh, 150, maybe a little over 150 feet away. All right, well, as you can tell, there's absolutely no drop in the uh, voltage. All right, no drop in voltage. It's about what I would expect. All right, hope this helps. Thanks for watching.